church unity. Church unity is a byproduct of following Jesus. When people work together, pray together, and suffer together for a common vision, then bonds are inevitably built. The vision comes first, then the commitment, then the actions, a consequence being the building of unity. When bishops, cathedrals, or clergy begin to describe their key task as building unity, then alarm bells start to go off in my head. Unity has taken the place of vision, and even worse, unity has become the vision. Not so long ago, a dean told me he wasn't prepared to offer blessings to gay and lesbian couples because of his cathedral's role in the unity of the diocese. He wasn't prepared to act without the agreement of the whole diocese. Bishops have told me the same thing, unprepared to act without the collegiality of the whole house of bishops. And the whole house of bishops have said the same thing, they're not prepared to act without the collegiality of all the other bishops in the Anglican world. A favorite verse of those who don't want to do anything offensive is from 1 Corinthians, where Paul talks deprecatingly about causing a brother or sister to stumble. In this thinking, a conservative minority can stall or prevent any change. Bishop Jack Spong has for a long time been one critical of the church's overemphasis on unity. He says the priority of unity often supersedes the priority of truth. Truth, however, can be a fickle thing and the basis for determining truth controversial. There are Christians, for example, who believe the biblical truth condemns homosexual relationships. Others, such as me, would argue the Bible is silent on committed relationships between same-sex partners. And further, the Jesus movement was supportive of people and relationships outside of the heterosexual norm. Using the Bible, therefore, as the sole standard for truth is problematic. The wisdom, experience, and reasoning of the community is necessary. Yet still, what is truth is not easily arrived at. It usually requires a choice to prioritize one or more values over others. Regarding same-sex relationships, for example, I prioritize the rights of a minority to enter into mutual loving relationships over the dominant tradition within Christianity of disparaging such relationships. I would submit that to follow in the footsteps of Jesus one has to make choices. Choices that have the strong possibility of putting one offside with the majority. Too often, Christian leadership sees itself as maintaining the best of the past, being sensitive to the needs of all people, and being resistant to any change that will alienate support. And this is the type of leadership that the institution affirms. It's said to be a caring, doesn't offend people. The altar of unity is very seductive. There are, however, a number of Christians and Christian leaders who walk a different, less trod path. They have chosen to turn their back on the vision of unity and instead, knowing their actions will be offensive, stand with the unpopular, the foreign, and the despised. The marginal are prioritized, not the mainstream. Many of the priests and laity 
of this parish of St. Matthew's have trod that path. And I too am proud to try and follow their examples. <laughs>